Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, President Seike, distinguished colleagues, students, past and present, ladies and gentlemen, friends, lend me your ears. We are all here today for Dr. Bob Tobin's farewell lecture. And before the lecture begins, and before I introduce him, um, I'd like to ask President Seike to come to the front to uh, say a few words. He kindly took time out of his busy schedule. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Hanley, for your kind introduction. Just a couple of minutes before, I just plan to sit very back on the seat and relax to listen to Bob's uh, lecture. But uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me such an uh, opportunity to make a brief uh, remarks and thanks to uh, Bob. Uh, first of all, as a president of uh, this university, uh, on behalf of uh, the entire community of Keio University, I would like to extend my deepest uh, appreciation for your uh, contribution, not only to uh, uh, Shogakubu, but also to the, the whole uh, you know, uh, community of Keio University. I think it, is, it was uh, uh, really magnificent you know, uh, contribution. I really appreciate it. And uh, then, personally, uh, may I talk of to you? Of course. I can't Bob? say no, okay, right? Bob. <laughs> uh, personally, I, at first, uh, when I uh, heard about the news that uh, uh, Bob uh, was going to retire, because, uh, you know, uh, my head situation is a little bit better than uh, him, <laughs> but uh, uh, I thought uh, uh, Bob is just as the uh, same you know, uh, age cohort as uh, myself. But uh, amazingly, uh, you know, he is such an energetic uh, uh, person, so uh, I, I couldn't imagine he is uh, uh, you know, uh, now uh, 65 years old. But uh, anyway, this is uh, the rule of uh, uh, this university. So although we miss him, uh, very much, but uh, uh, he said uh, he is going to stay in Japan forever, so uh, <laughs> uh, we will be able to uh, see him uh, anytime we would like to, right? So uh, uh, again, I thank you very much for your you know, contribution and your friendship to me personally, and uh, I hope uh, your rest of, uh, you know, not retiring life, maybe you have uh, another project, right, after the retire from Keio much more profitable one, right? right? <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope uh, your uh, you know, next uh, stage of your uh, career will be uh, successful. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Seike. <laughs> the theme of today's lecture is change. And I'm honored to serve as MC for today's event, which marks a milestone and symbolically an important change in Bob Tobin's life, his retirement after 19 years at Shogakubu. It also marks a change in our lives. We will miss him. And change is the only constant in life, and change is a theme in human thought from the Greek philosophers to the modern business fable, Who Moved My Cheese? Perhaps Bob's lecture today can suggest some ways that we can deal with the change his absence will bring. Um, in his two decades here, he's made a great contribution to our faculty. I know that he has great plans for the years ahead. Um, as the poet T.S. Eliot wrote, to make an end is to make a beginning. Uh, a benediction then, may his new beginning be blessed. My duty today is to sketch our speaker's journey, his life and work briefly. How can anyone sum up uh, a life and career in one or two minutes? Well, since I must be brief and be bold before I may be seated, I shall have to try. Briefly, Bob studied marketing and got his master's in education from the University of Massachusetts. 
He completed the executive program at the Harvard Business School and went on to Boston University to earn his doctorate in human and organizational development. He has worked in business as an analyst, consultant, and leadership trainer, and in education, teaching at Boston U, UMass, Cal Poly, and Chapman U before joining Shogakubu at Keio in 1994. It is as a teacher and a colleague at Keio that I know Bob best. He has inspired an entire generation of Keio students in his seminars and classes by opening what the English writer William Blake called the doors of perception. Leadership, change, creativity, conscience. These are the human qualities that he seeks to foster and develop. I think Bob believes, as I do, that we need to open our minds, that what we need today is the ability to form ideas from disconnected threads, to see patterns, to understand human nature, to think critically, to be receptive to different cultures, and to know ourselves. His teaching has made the lives of countless young people immeasurably richer. Some of his students are here with us today. Um, many, many have gone on to success with all that it implies in the world of business. A few are just starting out. Others have found another kind of happiness and fulfillment after graduation. It is said that some marriages are made in heaven, but I have heard of at least two married couples who met in Bob's classes. His influence has truly been far-reaching far and profound. Uh, Bob is not only an inspiring teacher, but an inspiring colleague. He is an elegant writer who appreciates the beauty and power of words, Calamus Gladio Fortior. He is also a great reader who appreciates writing in a wide variety of fields. He has written on change, organizational development, and intercultural communication. He has also written on art. The scope of his intellectual interests is evident in his reading too. Dense articles on management as well as beautifully crafted novels. Business case studies as well as English poetry. Company reports as well as books on contemporary Chinese painting. This is the intellectual horizon that the giant Peter Drucker saw. This is what the great Voltaire meant when he wrote in Candide, cultivate your garden, cultivate your garden, cultivate your mind. A liberal education can furnish the mind for a lifetime of learning. Bob's example inspires us all. Let me end with a quote from the English poet Tennyson's Ulysses, which sums up what I hope Professor Tobin will continue to do and to inspire us all to do when he leaves us to continue his journey. To follow knowledge like a sinking star beyond the utmost bound of human thought, to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Here then is Professor Bob Tobin. Thank you very much. You know, when I was, can you hear me okay? You know, when I was sitting there, I was wondering who Matthew was talking about. And then I recognized, oh, it's me. Believe me, I can't believe it. I, I, I'm so thrilled to see all of you here today. It's such an honor for me. But also, I can't believe that I'm retiring from Keio University. I'm here 19 years. I'm 22 years in Japan. I'm here with wonderful people. I'm here in this great university. I can only say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God, thank you, everyone. Believe me, when I was a younger guy in California, 
And they knocked on my door and they said, do you want to go to Japan? And I said, no, I could never imagine that I would be here 22 years later. So let me talk a little bit about my journey and what I've, what I've done and what I'm interested in. This is the day, this is the university, this is the place. And usually when people hear me talk, they say, Bob, are you going to talk about change? That's what you love, Bob. You love change. But I have to tell you honestly, I've changed. <laughs> I've changed a lot. Are you going to talk about creativity? And yeah, of course, I'll talk about creativity. And what's the other one, communication? Yeah, I talk about communication all the time, and it's so darn difficult. I'm working on it myself, and I hope that the students I've worked with have had a chance to learn something about communication from me. But today, I'm going to talk about something different, and that's courage. Because I think, in many ways, what I've really been teaching all these years, and I didn't know it, was courage. Courage to do something different. Courage to do something new. Courage to take the next step. Courage to be yourself. I think everything that I've done in this university, everything I've done in my life has really been about courage. And you know, you can't encourage people to be courageous unless you're a little bit courageous yourself. So I really try to be courageous myself and really try to encourage students to take the next step. Now, I probably started when I was born, but I was a little bit of a coward when I was born. You know, I didn't know how to talk. I didn't know how to do anything. So we won't go back that far, thankfully. We'll go back to when I was a student at Boston University. And I have to tell you, I love Boston University. I loved it. I love it. There's only one university I love more than Boston University, and that's KO University. But Boston University was the place where it planted seeds in my head. I've told many students here I wasn't a good student in university. Maybe that's why I push you so hard, the students who are here. I played around a lot, you know? Asobi, asobi, asobi. <laughs> drink, drink, drink. OK, don't tell anyone. But I'm leaving anyway, so it doesn't matter, OK? But I was not a good student. And I'll tell you something. One professor really said to me, Bob, you are really smart. You should go to graduate school. You should do something. But my grades were bad, but my scores were very good. And the professor said, I'm going to talk to the dean of the university and see if we can get you in. And it really took courage on his part. He said, I'm going to really push for you, Bob, and you can't disappoint me. So I, he went to the dean, and the dean said, OK, we'll give this guy a chance. And I couldn't disappoint my professor. So I ended up doing OK on my master's, and then I went on for my PhD at Boston University. But at Boston University, I loved it. And I was a consultant before. I was on TV. I was on ABC television. And that really took courage. I went there to talk to them about somebody else being on TV. And they said, well, you, know, you can talk. You don't look so bad. How about tomorrow? Can you start? What the hell? <laughs> you know, why not, right? Why not? So I was on TV for WCVB TV in Boston. And I spoke for about six months about different topics. And that really took a lot of courage on, on my part. But at Boston University, a few things happened for me. One is I was doing consulting, and I started teaching. I started teaching at Boston University. I started teaching at University of Massachusetts, and I loved it. I loved it. I was pretty good at it. And I said, well, maybe I'm going to change my career. Maybe I'm not going to be a consultant. Maybe I'm not going to be a TV star. Maybe what I can be is a professor. And I saw the beauty of being a professor. I saw how wonderful an occupation it is, and the people in this room they know how wonderful it is. Where else can you influence young people? Where else do you have a chance to, to say some things that can really change a person's lives? Where else? And I'm telling you, KO University is the only place. Where else will people laugh at your jokes, OK? But if that's not it, what it really is is a chance to influence young people and a chance to keep on learning. So at Boston University, I love being a professor. And I said, I'm going to be a professor. I'm not going to stay in consulting, although I ended up doing it in consulting too. And the other thing I learned about Boston, at Boston University is how important it was to get out of my comfort zone. You know, I love Boston. I don't have too much of a Boston accent, but I loved it there. I mean, I love anywhere I am. But I liked Boston. It was comfortable. I was born there. 